Hey math class, I hope you all had a great long weekend. Welcome back to another class of our online teaching. In today's lesson, we're going to be looking at lesson 58, parts 1 through 5. So let's get started. So if we're looking at part number 1, it tells us that fractions can also be division problems. So we're given a few fractions. And what we have to do is figure out what the whole number is. So we're trying to solve the division problems. So the fraction 12 over 4 or 12 fourths can also be read as 12 divided by 4. Then we have, right, the next fraction is 20 over 5 or 20 fifths. And as a division problem, we can read that as 20 divided by 5. So when we're dealing with division problems, we want to find out how many times can the bottom number go into the top number. Right, so we want to figure out for part A, how many times can 4 fit into 12? So we can skip count by 4s. 4, 8, 12. Right, so it can fit 3 times. Sorry. So it tells us that 12 divided by 4 is 3. Or that 4 goes into 12 3 times. If we look at B, we are looking at how many times can 5 fit into 20? So once again, we can skip count by fives. 5, 10, 15, 20, 4. So our answer is going to be 4. Right, 20 divided by 5 is 4. And then for our last question, we are dividing 9, or we're dividing 63 by 9. So it's asking us how many times can 9 fit into 63? Once again, we can skip count, and then our answer is going to be 7. Right? 9 goes into 63 seven times. So now what I want you guys to do is finish off part 1. So you're going to finish off uh, part D, E, F, G, and H. And remember, once again, you're looking at this fraction as a division problem, and you're trying to figure out what our whole number will be. So you guys can pause the video now, and then I will meet you in part 2. So welcome back, guys, to part 2. For part two, we're going to be multiplying fractions. In some cases, our fractions, we have two fractions that we're multiplying. And then in other cases, we have a whole number that we're multiplying with a fraction. So I will go over the first two examples with you guys. I'll go over A and B, and then I'd like you to try the rest on your own. So if we're looking at part 2A, we have 4 multiplied by 6 over 6. So we have to figure out what fraction this will equal. All right, I have my fraction and I have my whole number. I know that I cannot multiply a whole number by a fraction. So what I need to do is change this whole number into a fraction. In order to do that, I have to remember that each whole number is over the number 1. So I'm going to put the 4 over 1. Now we have to remember that when we're multiplying fractions, both my top number and my bottom number will change in my answer. My bottom numbers do not have to be the same when I'm multiplying. So now all I have to do is multiply my top number together and my bottom numbers together. So 4 multiplied by 6 is, get ready, right? It's 24. So that will be my new top number. And then 1 multiplied by 6 gives me 6. So my answer will be 24 over 6. So that's what we have to do when we have a whole number and a fraction. We're going to put the whole number over 1, and then we can multiply the two fractions together. In part B, we are given two fractions. We have 2 over 3 multiplied by 9 over 7. Right, so now this time we don't have to put any numbers over one because we have two fractions. My first step is going to be to multiply the two top numbers together. And then my next step will be to multiply my two bottom numbers together. Right, so two multiplied by nine is, get ready, right, it's 18. And then three multiplied by seven is, we can skip count by sevens, seven, 14, 21. So my answer is 18 over 21. 
So what I want you guys to work on now is the rest of the multiplication problems. Once again, if you have two fractions, all you're going to have to do is multiply the two top numbers together and the two bottom numbers together. If you have a fraction and a whole number, you're going to have to put the whole number over one, and then you can multiply the two top numbers together and the two bottom numbers together. So you guys can pause the video now, and then I will meet you guys in part number three. Welcome back guys to part number three. In part three, all we're going to be doing is practicing our multiplication table. This time we're going to be multiplying all of the numbers by each other. So in part A, we're multiplying seven and seven, part B, we're multiplying nine and nine, and so on. So I want you guys to really practice these. So I'll do the first three with you guys, and then I want you to practice the other ones. We can skip count if that works. We could use our multiplication chart if that'll help us as well. Or if we've memorized them, then that's awesome. We can do that as well. Right, so seven multiplied by seven is, get ready, right, it's 49. Nine multiplied by nine is, get ready, right, it's 81. And then our last one, six multiplied by six is, get ready, right, it's 36. So I want you guys to practice the rest on your own. If you need, you can use your multiplication chart or try skip counting as well. And then I'll see you guys in part four. So welcome back guys to part four. I'm going to read what it says in the book. You're going to complete mixed numbers that equal fractions. The whole number is shown. You're going to write the fraction you add to the whole number. So then they give us problem A. So give me a sec here while I write this out. Once again, this is part four. We have 29 over three equals nine plus blank. Right, so we're given a fraction, 29 over three equals nine, which is our whole number, plus, and this is where we're going to have to write a fraction. So the book tells us that our first step is to figure out what the whole number equals. So I will use a different color, right? We want to change this into a fraction. So nine, I will put it over one, and then I want to have the same bottom number. I'm going to multiply this one by three, and then I'll multiply the top by three again. So all I'm doing in this first step is changing the nine, the whole number, into a fraction, right? So one multiplied by three is three, and then nine multiplied by three is 27. The reason I did this is to see what nine will be as a fraction, right? Then I know what it will be, it'll be 27. So now I have to figure out what do I have to add to 27 to get to 29? I have to add 2. But not just 2, I have to add 2 thirds. So my answer is 29 over 3 equals 9, which then we came up with the fraction 27 over 3, plus, right, to get to 29 from 27, I had to add 2, and then I needed the same bottom number, so 2 thirds. I'll do two more because this might be a little bit confusing. So once again, all we're going to do is change the whole number into a fraction, which will then help us find out what else we need to add to get to the first fraction. For part B, I have 48 over 9 equals 5 plus and what I have to figure out is this fraction. So once again, right, 48 over nine is our original fraction equals five plus what fraction? My first step 
is going to be to change this 5 into a fraction that is over 9. So I'm going to put this over 1. To have the same bottom number, I'm going to multiply the 1 by 9. Whatever I do to my bottom number, I will do to my top number as well. So I'm going to multiply that by 9. Underneath here in this box, all I'm going to do is rewrite this as a fraction, right? So 5 multiplied by 9 is 45, and then 1 multiplied by 9 is 9. All this fraction here, 45 over 9, represents is this whole number. So 5 is equivalent to 45 over 9, right? 9 goes into 45 five times. So now that I've rewritten this whole number as a fraction, the top number will tell me what I need to add, right? I have 45 and I need to get to 48. So that means in my fraction, 46, 47, 48, I need to add three, but not just three because my bottom number has to be the same as well. I need to add, put it over nine. So I'm going to add three ninths and I'll do one more example. For part C, we have the fraction, let me see here, 70 over 8 equals 8 plus a fraction. Let me see here. Right, so for part C, this is C, I have 70 over 8 is my original fraction, and we're trying to make it equal to 8 plus a fraction. My first step, guys, is to change this 8 into a fraction. Remember, each whole number is over 1. So I'm going to put this 8 over 1. Now I want to make sure these have the same bottom number. So I'm going to multiply the 1 by 8. And then I'm going to do the same to the top number as I did to the bottom number. So I'll multiply that top number by 8 as well. So now all I'm going to do is right here, rewrite this as a fraction. 8 multiplied by 8 is, this was in our last question in part 3, get ready, write it 64 over, and 1 multiplied by 8 is 8. The reason we did this step is to figure out what we need to add to get to 70. We're at 64 and we need to get to 70, which means in my next fraction, I'm going to have to add 6, right? 64 plus 6 will give me 70. And then my bottom number in my fraction will have to stay the same. It's 8 here. It's 8 here. So it'll have to be 8 as well. So our answer is 70 over 8 equals 8 plus 6 over 8. We figured out that the 8 whole number as a fraction was 64 over 8. And then to get to 70 from 64, I had to add 6 over 8. So I want you guys to try doing part D and E on your own. And then I will see you guys in our last part for today's video. So welcome back. Our last part for today's class is going to be number families. We have three of them to do, and I will give you a hint. All of them are difference problems. So in all of these number families, your first number is going to be the difference number. So let's look at the first one together. I will read what it says. So our instructions tell us for each problem, Make a number family and solve or an answer the question. So in part A, it tells us that Tim has $2.37 less. That's our keyword, which tells us this will be our difference problem than the price of the radio. How much money does Tim have? So once again, we have our keyword less. We also want to look for the words more, higher, lower. Those are our other keywords that tell us this will be a difference problem. 
right beside our keyword will be our difference number. So right in front of the word less for part A, we had the number $2.37. Remember that when we are dealing with money, I need to have my dollar sign and I need to have my decimal. Where it tells us that Tim has $2.37 less than the price of the radio. Right, so now we have to figure out where to put the radio and where to put Tim. In the question, it told us that Tim has less than the price of the radio. So Tim will be our small number and the radio will be our big number. When we look at the picture in the textbook that's attached in this uh, in the in the lesson, it tells us that the radio cost thirty seven dollars and 45 cents. Once again, I need to have my dollar sign and my decimal. So what I have to figure out is how much money did Tim have? Right, this number is right before the arrow, so this will be a small number. When I'm looking for a small number, I'm going to subtract. So I'm going to take my bigger number, which is $37 and 45 cents, and I'm going to subtract it from my difference number, which is $2.37. Notice that in my first number, I have my dollar sign. All of my decimals and all of my place values are lined up. Now, all I have to do is in my answer, write the dollar sign, line up the decimals once again, and I can solve. Right? I can't take away 5 from 7. So I'm going to have to borrow. The 4 will turn into 3. 15 minus 7 equals 8. 3 minus 3 is 0. 7 minus 2 is 5. And then 3 minus nothing is 3. The reason that I want to make sure all of these are lined up is so that when I'm subtracting, I don't get mixed up, right? I want to subtract my ones with my ones, my tenths with my tenths, right? So my cents, I subtracted all of these with each other. And then my answer, guys, is $35.08. So that tells me that Tim had $35.08. Once again, I remember to put my dollar sign and my decimal. So guys, for parts B and C, remember once again, all of these will be difference problems. Look at the number right beside the difference, uh, the keyword, that will be your difference number. And then you're gonna be given two objects. Figure out which one will be your big item or which one will cost more and which one will cost less. The one that will cost more, for example, the radio, will be on the end of the arrow and then your other number, your small number, will be on the inside. And then all you have to do is figure out if you're going to be adding or subtracting. If you're looking for the price of the big item, you're going to add these two items up. If you're looking for the price of the small item, you're going to subtract the price of the big item from your difference number. So great job, guys, and keep up the great work. And then I'll see you guys in our next lesson.